Hi everybody, I'm Spike Brave, and in this video what I'd like to do is discuss some of the lore behind MechWarrior Online. This is a new style of video for me, and I'm providing this to uh, let people know about more information about the franchise if they're unfamiliar with it, because I've seen some questions about that. And because this is kind of a, a new style of a video for me, if you like it, please like the video. If you don't like it, please dislike it. And if there's something you'd like to see or want more discussion on or just generally have a question, leave me a note in the comments below and I'll either answer your question or we'll make some more videos. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about the source material for MechWarrior Online. If you go out to the website, you'll see a little tag underneath where it says MechWarrior Online that says a Battletech game. Battletech is an old pen and paper board game and uh, kind of struggle with calling it old because that makes me old. Uh, I've been playing Battletech for about 25 years. Uh, well before they had a computer game that could even do it justice. So let's start this discussion about the PPC talking about the lore from the Battletech game. I chose the PPC specifically because to me it is the iconic weapon of the Battletech universe. This mech, or this weapon was designed to destroy a battle mech. Um, when I think about battle mechs, I think about the ones that carry PPCs as their main armament. My, some of my favorites are the Warhammer, the Marauder, and the Battlemaster. And they all have a PPC, and they use it to smash down the enemy mechs. If we look at um, a lot of the descriptions in the fiction that kind of uh, sprung up around the game, there were several novels written. Um, if you went out and Googled Michael Stackpole, he's one of the most prol prolific authors of the Battletech universe. If you look at the descriptions of the weapon and how it's described in, uh, you know, flowery language, they say it's lightning. Well, if you actually look at what the source material says in the in the rule books and the source books, it's not lightning. I've actually said that myself, though. It's a quick way to describe what the weapon is. It shoots lightning, and that sounds really cool too. Well, what a PPC is is a particle projector cannon. The source material states that this weapon does damage by shooting uh, ions or protons at high speed at the target, conferring kinetic and heat energy into the target. Probably looks like lightning. That would make sense. If we uh, were to talk about technology we have currently that's real, this would be kind of like weaponizing the Large Hadron Collider. Very devastating. Um, but if we actually look at how it's damaging its target, it's not electrifying its target and conferring a large amount of electricity into the target, it's the impact of these particles and the uh, resulting stuff that happens from that. You might have small fusion events. Uh, who knows? So if we look at the board game again, we have three categories of weapons that have made it all the way into MechWarrior Online. We have our energy, we have our ballistic, and our missile. Well, for this discussion, missiles don't matter at all. The PPC is considered an energy weapon, and uh, that's how it was ca categorized in Battletech. Now, it doesn't require ammunition because what they say in the uh, source material is that it uh, strips hydrogen atoms out of the air, charges those particles, and just sends them downfield. That's a real uh, good uh, sci-fi explanation of how this weapon works. Um, I don't want to get into nitpicking it. it there are some glaring uh, problems with that. These things work in space. There, there's no air in space. How does that go? I, I don't want to nitpick it, though. It, it, it's fun. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time looking at how would this really work. This is just, I just want to tell you how they say it works. So charged particles, we're shooting those downfield. There we go. That's great. Now, some things about the PPC that people don't understand. Why can't I shoot it inside 90 meters? Well, in the board game, it, it there's some weapons that are meant for long-range combat have a minimum range modifier. That makes it harder to hit things up close. And the explanation that's given in the source material is that um, the PPC's beam doesn't coalesce until it gets about 90 meters out to prevent damaging the machine that's shooting it. Sure, that makes sense. Um, the, the problem that I see with that is why does the ER PPC not have that problem? It's never explained. It's always been kind of one of those, well, that one shoots further. Wouldn't it have double the minimum range modifier? Because you really don't want that close to you. Um, I've never seen a good explanation. Uh, if, if you have, please feel free to leave me a note. I would uh, love to see a good explanation as to why the PPC doesn't have that problem, or the ER PPC doesn't have that problem, and uh, how that was, 
how the game designers chose to implement that is the beam just isn't there within 90 meters. So you shoot something inside 90 meters, there's no damage. So uh, keep that in mind with your PTCs if you're new to the, new to the game and uh, just discovering it and the lore behind it. If you shoot somebody with a PPC and they're within 90 meters of you, you'll generate heat, you'll see all the animation, it'll make noise, it'll do all kinds of cool things, but it won't damage your target. Um, if you actually want to see some in-game examples of how this weapon works, check out my energy weapon tutorial. I go through uh, shooting all the guns and explain how they work if you're actually looking for a live fire demonstration. So that's been a look at the uh, lore behind the PPC and uh, what it meant in uh, the old board game. So let's talk about MechWarrior Online and how they chose to implement that and what that could mean to your gameplay. So what's really kind of interesting about the uh, conversion into a uh, video game, especially a first-person shooter slash vehicle simulation like we have with MechWarrior Online, is you have to kind of change the Battletech rules. The first thing that makes Battletech really, really different is that each turn you take in Battletech represents 10 seconds of real time. So doing a straight one-to-one -one conversion just won't work. The other problem is, like I said, I've been playing Battletech for 25 years. They haven't done a whole lot to update the technology stack. Sure, they've added ER weapons or some new cool toys here and there, but sometimes the technology that they have doesn't make sense with what we have because we have stuff that's better. Now, there's some stuff in the lore, and if we want to see more lore videos, I'd be happy to make them about the universe and why it's kind of in that state. They've kind of... It's a universe of constant war, so uh, progressing technology is difficult for them because they tend to blow up factories that make technology because you don't want your enemies to have it. So, they've done some things with MechWarrior Online to uh, um, not only maybe progress the technology, but make it make sense to what you would expect for a modern video game to have in it. So the 10 second turns versus uh, real time, really difficult. And I, I like the way that MechWarrior Online is implemented. Would I have done some things differently? Probably. But I, I think they've done a good job of staying true to the source material. And what they have done does make sense. And is it what I would do? Maybe not all the time. Does it make sense? Absolutely. And I think that they're doing it with an eye to being true to the source material. So what they decided is that if your PPC beam is out there trying to coalesce and stay away from you, if you're inside 90 meters, it doesn't do damage. That makes sense. Now, if we look at the, the board game rules, the PPC is an energy weapon, but it is actually shooting something physical at you. doesn't need ammunition, and, that, and that's fine. It's still an energy weapon. So what they've done when they implemented this weapon is everything about the weapon itself is considered energy. So if you're out there looking, and let's go look at some battle mechs when we talk about this. So let's go to the mech lab here, and we'll pull up some battle mechs. If we look at, let's say, my grasshopper here. Um, energy cooldown, plus 10%. If I had a PPC on this mech, it would get that quirk. Energy heat generation, minus 12.5%. If I had a PPC on here, it would get that quirk as well. So all the stuff that describes how the weapon works in the quirks here, would apply to a PPC if it was generic and said energy. So energy cooldown, energy heat generation. Where things get kind of weird, and I understand why they implemented it like this, and we'll talk about that, is what the PP shoot, PPC shoots, so what you're actually seeing go downfield, they're considering it a ballistic, and that makes sense. If you look at the source material, we're shooting a, a wad of uh, ionized particles downfield. That's a physical thing. That does work like a ballistic. I understand why they uh, would implement it like that. Now, um, for my two cents, this is a place where I would have implemented things a little bit differently. Um, and to me, this is actually just a, 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 a problem with the categories that are available in Battletech. Energy, missile, ballistic. What is this? Well, in my opinion, it's not any of these things. It's a particle beam weapon. It's not an energy weapon. We're not, you know, doing some kind of uh, EM discharge that conveys, like, heat to the target like a laser. We're not shooting a shell. So it's not a ballistic. Definitely not a missile. Missiles don't even figure into this argument at all. So what I would have done is I would have said this is a particle beam weapon. Something different. If you actually look at uh, 
current military technology and when they talk about weaponizing things like the Large Hadron Collider, they do refer to it as a particle beam weapon because it does work a little bit differently. So maybe I would have a, uh, a different category and say that particle beam weapons go here, so ERPPCs and PPCs go in there. But what they've chosen to do, and it completely makes sense to me, is we're going to treat the weapon and everything about the weapon itself, its heat, its um, cooldown, as an energy weapon. But what it's actually shooting, the representation that we have to track on screen when we're programming a video game, we're going to say that that's a ballistic. That makes sense. We have a physical object that's traveling through the air and smacking into the target. So when we're in here and we're looking at these quirks, let's go look at the uh, Jaeger mech. I believe that has it. Ballistic range and ballistic cooldown. Now, this is where things get weird with the PPC. The range is considered part of the weapon. So if you have an energy range, that goes on the PPC. But the ballistic velocity goes on PPC. So let's see if I can have one that has ballistic velocity. I'm pretty sure my firebrand does. So you can see it has ballistic velocity plus 10%. PPCs get that. What they're shooting is considered a ballistic. So keep that in mind. I've actually gone out and I've done some tests and uh, it's accurate. If you have ballistic velocity, it has to say ballistic velocity as a general thing there, that goes straight to the PPC. So if you put a PPC on a Mac with ballistic velocity, that does affect the uh, PPC velocity. So in this case, we have ballistic velocity and PPC velocity. So if we actually shoot a PPC out of this, it is 30% faster. What's going down field is really, really fast. That's why I have PPCs on my uh, firebrand here because uh, they go down field really, really fast. It's um, a good uh, way to set up that weapon. So that's been a look at the PPC from its beginnings in the lore to uh, the Battletech game to uh, how they've chose to implement it here. Um, as I said, it, is it the, the best way? Can you argue against implementing it like this? Absolutely. I think it's a fair representation of the weapon with what they have and how they've chosen to implement it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Like I said, would I have done it that way? Maybe not. But I think it's a good representation. I think they're doing a great job of taking this 10 second turn and turning it into a real time simulation. So uh, again, if you like these uh, type of lore videos, let me know. If there's a specific lore thing you'd like to uh, see me cover, let me know and I'll start working on those videos. As always, have good luck on the battlefield and I hope to see you there. Thanks a lot.